and a pleasant good day to all our listeners and viewers. It's another week for us here at the Information Command Center at the studios of the Government Information Service. We are coming out of an eventful Easter weekend as it relates to the island's response to COVID-19. The weekend would have typically been one of observation for Christians and a period of fun-filled activities for others. However, instead, we saw the country under 24-hour curfew on Good Friday. And um, going into the weekend, that curfew shifted to 10 hours from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily. Supermarkets and gas stations are to remain open as well as essential services and hardware stores as announced by the Prime Minister on Sunday, April 12th. Continuing for a recap of the weekend, on Friday, April 10th, St. Lucia confirmed one additional case of COVID-19, bringing our total number of positive cases to 15. Then on Easter Sunday, the Chief Medical Officer and the Prime Minister gave the nation an update and this was followed by a telethon to raise funds for our frontline workers. The activity raised in excess of $2.5 million. And we also saw the commencement of the National Feeding Program, which provided meals for more than 5,000 vulnerable persons across the island. This initiative involved hotels from across the island, as well as the SLHT and the events company of St. Lucia. Of course, it is being hailed as a major success. Let us now take a look at one of the artists who contributed to the telethon over the weekend, and it's a song written by Isai Hall and featuring A.G. Simpson. It's a tribute to our frontline workers. <laughs> Front line. 
And the most commendable effort there coming from E.G. Simpson with a song written by Isai Hall. And of course, Isai Hall was the co-MC along with Carlton Cyril of the Telethon, which um, was televised on Sunday. And just to continue some of the updates we have come into hand, the latest is that um, as of today, 14th April, out of the 15 confirmed cases, 11 of those have recovered, two of them have been repatriated, and we now have 25 persons in quarantine and 20 in isolation. And just to respond to some of the comments I see coming across on the Facebook page, um, the two zones continue to remain in place, the north and south. So as we speak now, there are no buses running from Castries, Sovieto, and um, vice versa. Additionally, there is still the ban on the sale of alcohol, a temporary ban. Until such time, we will inform you when this ban is lifted. Today, we have with us two very um, special guests joining us in studio. Um, right now, I'm going to introduce you to one of those guests. The second will be coming on a little later. Um, with me is one of our foremost creatives who goes by the name Philbert Salter. Not sure if he still uses that um, <laughs> given name. Um, he goes by the name of Keo. Yes. He's also put out a creative piece in response to COVID-19. And we'll be speaking to him a bit about his creativity, his music. But first, we are due for a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Philbert Salter, a.k.a. Keo. In a world where germs are widespread, comes a group of superheroes germ busters the germaphores we spend most of our time fighting germs every day of the week after i play i wash my hands before i eat i wash my hands after i play with my puppy i wash my hands i cover my sneezes with my forearm or elbow when i am in public and I cover my cough to avoid spreading dangerous germs. We are the germophones, germ busting superheroes. You can be too. Always wash your hands and cover your sneeze and cough. Let's stop the spread of menacing germs. We'll be back germophones with more powerful germs. And we will be waiting to prevent you from spreading. Yeah. And welcome back. In studio with us today is Keo Philbert Sultan. And I was telling him off camera that I had to put his government name <laughs> out there so that, you know, Trudeau, his prime minister in Canada, know who to send, to send that the check support to. check to, you know, when he gets back. <laughs> You're now based in Canada. Yes. But yes. you find yourself in St. Lucia just before the lockdown. Was that by chance, by accident? Uh, actually, I had been here for a little while. I came down last year in July. And I had been here for a while. My father had passed, unfortunately, during that time. And as a result, I decided to stay a little bit longer with my family. And I was actually just gearing up to head back to Toronto when all of this sort of hit and found myself here. I figured if I had to be stranded anywhere, I'd like to be stranded home. With so family. you didn't mind being stranded? No, no, no. no okay, no, okay. No. I mean, the situation is what it is at this point. Yes. So in, in terms of weighing my pros and cons, I felt more comfortable being here with family. Well, technically, you're not stranded. You're at home. I'm home. Yes. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Bring us up to speed as to some of your more recent endeavors when it comes to music. 
Uh, okay, so I've been developing this brand called Solstice for some time. Solstice started as a live event series and it's really taken a life of its own as an overall platform for artists. So through that platform, Solstice Sounds, we recently put out a compilation album featuring a number of my favorite St. Lucian artists and producers. The name of that album is called Birds. We put that out February 14th. And uh, we've been promoting that ever since. We put out the first single called 758 featuring Rashad Joseph and Big C uh, earlier that month as well in February, followed up by Don Dada featuring myself and Tori L. And the album came out on the 14th and we just released the third single for it entitled Take Your Time featuring myself, Michael Robinson and Rashad Joseph. And why, the title, why the title Birds? <laughs> um, it was something that we just kind of came up with in the studio, to be honest. Uh, we were in the, the final stages of putting the album together. And the way we usually do it, or the way I usually approach my projects, is I take all of the songs, once we've decided what the track list will be, put it all in one session, um, and then sort of work on the transitions in between it. So there are a lot of sound effects in it, like the sound of waves, the sound of, of, of birds, mm -hmm. and, and the sounds of like, just a lot of these ambient sounds to create that that aesthetic, if you will, or that atmospheric vibe. And one night we were in the studio and we were like, man, they really have a lot of birds in this album. <laughs> and then the next thing I knew it stuck. And we had the al the, once we had the artwork and everything put together, we were like, okay, this is, this is God talking to us. So we just, you know, we ran with it. And it's been mm -hmm. good so far. Yeah. Coming out of school, how have you been able to balance your music um, with your professional career? Um, well, even going into school, music had always been the motive. So I studied marketing at St. Mary's University in Halifax under the premise that I would leave school and focus on, you know, marketing myself as an artist and at least having that expertise and that knowledge to do so. Um, so, so far, it's really been good. I've been a, a full-time creative, I would say, for about six or seven years now. And um, I've, I found... I found it's been beneficial in, in the way in which that I diversify my hustle, if you will. So I, I generate, uh, I focus on multiple streams of income through being a creative. So while performing is, is key, merchandise is also important. I songwrite for others. I, I work a lot in publishing, so I do a lot of sync licensing, things that, and things of that nature for film, television, Netflix shows, video games, whatever the case may be. Uh, as well as like, you know, public speaking at conferences and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Mm -hmm. Since you spoke about so many of these different streams, hopefully those are all revenue-making streams. Fortunately, yes. And um, we were talking earlier on, off-camera again, about the impact that COVID-19 has had on creatives, not just in St. Lucia, but the all over the world. And yes. now having to find creative ways to monetize your creativity. Yes. What has that been like for you? Um, well, I mean, the reality of the situation at hand is that we're unsure as to what the climate of things is going to look like once this has passed. There's a possibility that things may very well never be the same. Mm -hmm. um, us as, as artists, as creatives, performing is one of our biggest revenue generators. So now it comes a time where we really have to figure out how to how to diversify how to adapt in the times like a lot of things are happening online right now which is great so we have that exposure and that that um interaction with our fans but now we have to figure out how do we monetize that and not just temporarily but moving forward we have to figure out what our business model is going to look like mm -hmm. i'm still trying to figure that out um fortunately i a lot of films and, and television shows are already in post-production so there are a lot of people looking for music still so All i'm right. still doing a lot of publishing stuff i'm writing and recording from home so i'm still active as an artist and we'll, we'll see where it goes as this continues to evolve okay, what has it been like for you adhering to the protocols of staying at home, practicing the social distancing and what have you. What has that been like? Um, I'll be honest, it was, at first, it, it was a, a tough pill to swallow. Uh, and I took it a little, a little hard because, you know, being someone who already lost a parent, I wasn't, in, I wasn't trying to lose another, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, mm -hmm. I found myself being very paranoid and being very careful to adhere to a lot of those protocols. Uh, as time progressed and as we, as a nation, sort of got a hold of the situation, I was able to feel a lot more comfortable with it. I had no problem adhering to, to the rules of staying home. Um, and I, every day that has passed has just sort of gotten a little easier. I really try to look at this time as a, a good moment for reflection, a good moment for growth. Uh, I know we say that and that tends to be like the cliche thing right mm -hmm. now, but it's true because this is the first time in our generation's history that the entire world is on pause. 
You know what I mean? So what better time do you have than to take that time to reflect? Definitely. Let's go through your recent song, the contribution, your response to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Take me through the whole creative process of putting this together. Uh, it, w it really wasn't... Um, it, it, I, I want to say it was something like the spirit sort of moved me. Um, I, my friend from Toronto, Eric Gordon, he had sent me the beat a few weeks back. And he kept asking me, like, you know, take a look at it, see what you could do with it. I finally, like, I tried to write every day for an hour or something like that. So it was just that particular day. I sat down in my balcony, I put on the beat, and I was just writing. And that was what was heavy on my spirit at the time. And by the time I was done with it, I didn't even really realize um, how powerful a piece it, it could have been at that point in time. Mm -hmm. I wrote it, I recorded it in my room, I sent it to Eric Gordon in Toronto. He mixed and mastered it, sent it back. I then sent the audio to a, a few friends of mine. And a, we have a Solstice Sound WhatsApp group, so I got a, a little bit of feedback from that. And then I sent the song to Alan Favrier, who then put the visuals together for it. And then by Good Friday, we had it out. I must have wrote it maybe Tuesday or Wednesday that week. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Introduce that track to our listeners and viewers right now. Okay, uh, this is Crisis, produced by Eric Gordon, performed by myself. world is in another crisis we stuck inside and we forced to connect through devices life as we knew it'll probably never be the same but the earth is healing so maybe we needed this change we needed a break no fear of missing out maybe that's what it's about maybe we needed this drought population control crazy just look at the toll there's not much that we know except that we safe at home use the time for your growth challenge your mind and your soul reconnect with your friends reconcile with your foes get closer to god through meditation and prayer Heaven knows already been one hell of a year, yeah. The world is in another crisis. We stuck inside and we forced to connect through devices. Can't even go and see outside, chick. <laughs> yeah, ain't tripping on social distance. Was never one for the crowds. Don't know what tomorrow holds, could only live in the now. I'd rather live present and die than live in denial. I hope to come out of this as someone to make you proud. We ain't seen nothing like this in our generation. A modern day plague, it be like the end of days. But trust me, this ain't the time for any more segregation. Nobody is safe, but everyone could be saved, yeah. The world is in another crisis. We safe inside and we blessed to connect through devices. A change of perspective is priceless, yeah. K.O. Really good piece of work there. Thank you, Thank you very you much. For that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And you were talking earlier on, um, you're doing something on Thursday, I think it is, as part of the whole tourism Oh uh, Yeah, I will initiative. be on Travel St. Lucia's Instagram live at 5 p.m. doing seven minutes in St. Lucia, where I'll be doing a performance from home. Great stuff. We'll all yeah. be looking out for that. Yeah, it should be fun. Definitely. We're now due for another break, but when we come back, we will be joined by another one of our musical forces here in St. Lucia. Stay tuned. Cette lici ka registre vers min corona et i ka fè mouvement et kan chay vitesse tan chak ka nef ka kouye pou vilijans publik la fè wolo pale an plas publik kon bol an men baz ti boutik chanje distan sosyal 6 pye Hod yon alot, i ka twa vaitan, si ou santi kou pa kodyal, quarantine kou, pa twe a kontak e pi lot, an ka ou te twa pe espoze. Se an ekwye, free one one ou be ne pot klinik yo pe ou. Le pe ya di mi akle, sa vle di, le supermarket, famasi, e pi etiem, yo aksesam avan se te twe. Pays à clé en plein, ça veut dire tout bagay fermé à 24 heures. C'est vi protocole comme sorti par bio indication santé. Nous tout ensemble, ça sauve vers min corona. Si nous tout servi jidla à toutes les. 
And welcome back. Joining me in studio right now, I have another creative who is a singer, songwriter, saxophonist, Rob Zai Taylor. Good afternoon, Tony. Welcome to our command hey, center. Thanks for having me. We saw you doing your thing, well, at home, live. Sure. Um, for a telethon. <laughs> How was it? How was that for you, making your contribution to the COVID-19 telethon? You know, it, w it was really great um, because, you know, we, we got to actually perform and then see the comments coming in live during the time we're doing it. Um, and we've done it, we've done it three times now. We choose to use Fridays as our, our, uh, our day, our evening that we actually do a, a live performance, myself and Finesse. And, um, and it's grown, and I say that in terms of our setup and the way you do things, because it's a learning process as well, in, you know, as far as going live is concerned. You know, you have your, your options of Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Instagram Live as, as the three main ones. And, um, and, and so far, it's been really good. You know, I, 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 we wanted to keep the momentum going of, of our performances. And, um, and the reaction of it so far has been great. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to do those, I recognize, very early on, even before we were under any sort of curfew or lockdown, you know, saying to persons on your social media platform, like, mm -hmm. hey, guys, we need to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And speaking, you know, linking up with the local entertainers, I think you went even as far as starting your own um, GoFundMe page saying to entertainers, sure. hey, this thing is going to hit us hard. And I saw you doing that even before the hotels closed their doors. Well, actually, no, I, I didn't do it before the hotels closed the doors, or, or at least, uh, at least uh, I didn't do it before we were out of work. Right. Um, you know, obviously, being we, we're full-time musicians, so we work when we're here year-round throughout the hotels wherever we can, when we can. So, so we already knew from the majority of the hotels that we were working at that, at a minimum, we may go back to work by the beginning of June. But really, nobody has the answer to that. We don't mm -hmm. know how this is going to go. We we don't know if it's going to get any worse before it gets better. So, so June first is the is the really the the first point at where we might go back to the hotels mm -hmm. but the reality is really i i personally think that even if the do the hotels do open or some of them do open by june if that is the case we still have to consider people feeling comfortable flying here um uh, the prices of flights and hotels will have to be slashed to really entice people here and will entertainment be one of those first things that is brought back into the hotels we don't know so so yes we we decided that it was really important to start well c continue performing and um and also start what is like a, it's not actually a gofundme but it's similar to that um on, online so and we decided from the from the get-go as well that um musicians live musicians uh, are one of few people who have that ability to generate money um, mm -hmm. from people um, listening whether it's tips performance fees or whatever so um, being uh, being it that we're going to be out of work for the next two three four months um, we need to make some money we need to maintain ourselves also we don't know there's no handouts coming necessarily we don't know what's going to come if anything and, and whilst doing that also, we wanted to also make sure that whatever we do manage to raise on our campaign site, on our donation page, that whatever we raise, we're going to give a third of that money to people here in St. Lucia that are less fortunate, who, who really do need some money and have, don't have that ability to generate money for themselves during mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about how this crisis has impacted you personally as a musician. Lots of gigs, I imagine, tours and of course your local performances. Yeah, well definitely, um, being a, a full-time musician, um, you can see what effect it's had on all musicians around the world, and for us here it's no exception. Um, you know, it, it's hit us pretty hard, um, and, and I think whilst trying to maintain some kind of performance and presence online and some way of making money, it really will never be enough um, to kind of maintain yourself for any long period of time. So what it's done for me, um, is aside from abiding by the laws of staying home mm -hmm. um, is okay um, try to improve myself improve myself musically learn new songs learn new techniques but also more importantly um, learn learn and try to um, bring about new new revenues of income new different new, new streams of revenue um, that are not musical um, so I'm not just relying on, a, on my musical career to 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 make money you know to live to support myself and my family so so i've been studying i've actually got back into studying uh, of all things which i've not done in a long time so i'm actually studying some other things right now online um 
to be able to make some money, you know, mm -hmm. um, as I go along, I might not be able, even if things get back to normal, who know I might not be able to perform like I do in the next 10 years. So I need, I need to know what else I can do. So I think it's important that you try to identify and establish some other forms of income and, and personal growth during this downtime. All right, certainly. And of course, the government has already addressed the aspect of the creatives as part of the social stabilization plan. And um, the creatives will fall under subsist subsistence allowance of EC $500 a month for three months. However, I'm also aware that various agencies, the CDF, the SLHDA, ECHO, and the Department of Culture, and the creative industry, they're also working on implementing further interventions for our creatives. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney also spoke briefly on the subject during Sunday's telethon. The same way that we need to support our local musicians, here they are today contributing their time um, in order to be able to raise awareness and lend their voices to what's going on. Uh, we need to remember them. We need to make sure that we get the radio stations to play their music, that we go online and we buy their music legally, we don't just pirate their music, and support the talent that we have in St. Lucia. The stabilization program that we spoke to speaks to them specifically as well. Yes, yes. The same thing I've said to the barbers in terms of forming themselves into a unit, a group, um, in order to be able to approach the NIC as a group rather than individually, uh, providing the proof that they had work with the hotel so that we know that they've, been, they've lost their jobs um, and that we can be able to provide them with some stimulus. And again, we're not in any way suggesting that this is a replacement to the income that they were earning before. Right. Right, this is certainly to be able to help them put some food on the table um, during this very difficult time. And if there's anything you guys know, you know that you have an advocate in me when it comes to supporting the creatives. Sure. And, uh, you know, we will get through this and we will rise again. And I think it was very timely that, you know, when I was looking through your music, I came across one of your music videos, um, Rise Up. So we think we would, you know. Take a listen to that song right now, especially in this time that we're in right now, our COVID response has Rise Up by Rob Zai Taylor.
rise up. A reminder that we may be in a sort of a dark or gray place right now, but we will rise again. That's right. Um, 15 years ago, you said that? that That's when that was released, yeah. Was how old? How many kids you have? I've got two. I've got two. My daughter now, she's, uh, she's 19. She's in the second year of college, and my son is uh, 15 and in the second year of high school. So. Right. How are they coping with the whole They're situation? coping all right. I mean, they're in the States. So they live in Florida now for the last few years. So mm -hmm. uh, they go to school there. And, and like here is implementing now, they are doing their final uh, semester online. So everything right. is at home. I'm turning into a, into a teacher daddy as well, so I'm doing I'm doing various <laughs> classes online with my son at least. So and you have to learn new things all over again. Yeah, yeah, I'm catching myself a little bit <laughs> yeah. too, but I'm learning too. <laughs> yeah. Of course, one of the critical sectors being impacted by COVID-19 is the education sector, and one of the other addresses we had on Sunday was by Honourable Gail Rigobert, Minister for Education. Under normal circumstances, schools would have reopened today, April 14th. However, this week, teachers and principals will be preparing virtually, that is, for the commencement of the third term on April 20th. Now, classes will not resume in the normal classroom settings, but students will be engaged at various levels with instructional material while at home. The minister also addressed the situation with students abroad. Um, she said that the students abroad who are on scholarship funded by the government of St. Lucia either through the equip or otherwise, they have been contacted and they can all be accounted for. Some students opted to come back home and this was facilitated in partnership with other government agencies while others opted to remain in the country of study. The department has also facilitated provision of psychosocial interventions for those students expressing need for that service. Um, we have one of our students over in Taiwan, Makiba Dudley, and um, they put together a short video expressing what they're going through. So let us take a listen now to Makiba Dudley, one of our St. Lucian students who is studying in Taiwan in this clip from Cut TV. Hey, Cut TV family. I just wanted to step in and share my experience, what it's like living on the other side of the world during this pandemic. It's been relatively normal here as it pertains to classes, school, work, and everyday life. The Taiwanese government have been dealing with this situation aggressively by implementing a variety of protocols we need to follow as well as ensuring the safety of everyone here in Taiwan. It's impressive what they have been able to do considering our proximity to where the outbreak started, which is in Wuhan, China. At my university, for example, temperature checks have been out in place at every department and entrance, followed by sanitation of hands too. Also, we need to do daily, daily checks of our health through QR codes which have been placed at the entrance of checking. Uh, this code holds information on our footprint. Can you believe this? Our footprint. And um, throughout the university with our temperature details as well as where we have been. Um, in class, we practice social distancing as well. We are no longer allowed to sit close to each other. We need to maintain a certain distance and a photo is taken in every class so that in the event a student falls ill with the virus, um, officials are able to track the student's movement and notify and check those who were in the same room as the student. There have been a few cases where students and professors have fallen ill across Taiwan, including in my university. We had one case where a student fell ill. However, he never stepped foot in the university, which was amazing because um, it didn't cause any harm or anything to anybody else. However, he did come into contact with two students who are his friends and um, those students attended classes. So with adhering to protocol, um, those classes were cancelled and all the students who were a part of those classes, they were notified and you know asked to report their condition as pertains to how they're feeling, if they had any fever or any signs or symptoms of the virus. Um, those two friends who he came in contact with, they were cleared of the virus. So basically, you know, they have done everything to ensure that everybody else who were in the same class, in the same area, they're all fine. The classes that the students attended have all been sanitized and um, they have been given the all clear. 
Um, there have been a few cases where um, some students also need to take online classes. So if their classes are cancelled, um, they need to take those classes online and it has been working tremendously for a lot of students who were unable to return to Taiwan after the outbreak happened. Um, so we have students who are still in their countries or stuck in other countries and they were unable to return. So they are able to take those classes, their education is still, you know, they're still there. Their attendance is not there physically, but their attendance online and the classes that they're able to take, the information, the notes, the assignments, they're all able to ensure that these things are given in. Um, I would say that overall, we are all playing our part in fighting against this disease and really hoping that it does not get too overwhelming here. I mean, again, the government has, has been doing everything that they can and it's ridiculously amazing and I really, really applaud them for everything that they have done so far. As it pertains to what the virus has done in other countries, it's really disheartening and sad. What has been happening all over the world, I mean, with the death tolls that are hitting and skyrocketing in Italy, as well as the disease that has really taken over New York City and other countries, it's just ridiculously disheartening. And uh, I really hope that people are seeing exactly what is happening and the protocols that are in place as it pertains to quarantine, social distancing, sanitizing, staying away from crowded areas as well as staying home. All of this is for our well-being and to prevent this from getting worse than it already is. I really hope that you know we can come together help each other if you realize that somebody is not doing so well during this time. I mean it is a really tough time check on them, call them, message them, just be there for each other. This is the time we actually need to, you know, come together as communities, as families, as everything, just to provide that assistance and support for those people who are unable to say anything or who are unable to share what they're feeling. Um, I would really like to also applaud the frontliners. I mean, wow. I cannot begin to understand what they are going through and I know how difficult it is for them. So I would really, really love to applaud them. Thank you so much for everything that you have been doing for all of us, for our lives, for our safety and everything. I know it's not easy. Um, other than that, this is the situation here. This is the situation for us and um, I'm really hoping that it gets better. It really does get better soon for everyone all over the world. So do what you need to do, stay home, sanitize, wear your mask when necessary, practice social distancing, and do what you need to do in order for this virus to remain contained and to not get anybody else infected or displaced or anything like that whatsoever. So thank you so much. Thank you, Makiba Dudley, and hope you remain safe and strong. One of our St. Lucian students studying in Taiwan with a clip here from Cut TV, and I must say a special thank you to Colin Weeks of Cut TV for providing us with that clip. Right now, we have a once in a lifetime <laughs> treat for you guys, our listeners, our viewers, our followers. Thanks to COVID 19, they've brought two of our Young creators, well, young one said he's not so young anymore, but <laughs> I, I would say like know, thing. Know, right <laughs> for the very first time, St. Lucia, we have K.O. joined by Rob Zan. I sort of put them on the spot there to sure. freestyle something for me. Hopefully, K.O. could go back to his freestyle days at the barber shop, <laughs> South <laughs> Lewis and that sort of thing. A minute. So, guys, just take it away. All right. All right. Give me a beat. <laughs> Let's uh, try this out. Mm. Give me a beat. Gotta get it before your time's up. Gotta keep your spirit and your mind up. 
Keep your family safe with your vibe tough. Yeah, yeah. Oh, world is in another crisis. Stuck behind all the devices. Gotta feel like it is lifeless. We gotta get through all these times, sis. Something that we never seen. Something that we never lived. This is how we gotta be. We can't forget to ever give. Be there for your neighbor. Yeah. Be there for your times. Yeah. Be there for your people. Hey. Be there for your child. Yeah. Be there for your nation. Yeah. We gotta do it together. Yeah. Forever and forever. The life that we live is better. Yeah. Wow. Life is in a crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Hey. The world is in another crisis. Stay inside and be blessed to say the devices. Yeah. A change of perspective is priceless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have the studio audience to applaud, you know, put it back. <laughs> But I really want to thank you guys. I mean, yeah, we're in a crisis. We may be in a little dark place right now, but we hey, got to keep the vibe. We up. have to keep the vibe. Yep. But we have to put a smile on our faces, especially for the younger ones. You know, to show them that you know there's hope. At a, there's, yeah, there's hope. There's Absolutely. hope. And stay positive. Thanks for having us today. Right. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. And um, I believe also that it's quite apropos to end with another music video, um, which was done in commemoration of Saint Lucia's 40th Independence Anniversary. But it is also so relevant for our times right now. Um, stay safe, everyone, and remember, we are not out of the woods as yet. We are still under 10-hour curfew, and it is not business as usual as yet. So let's continue to remain all in to fight this war against the coronavirus. From the voices of children have come songs of praise songs and gladness for this day, day, the day of our independence. My history, it's your history It shaped you, it shaped me Our journey's the same Though from different parts we came But from these dark and painful journeys Unfolds a great destiny And a brighter future for our home, St. Lucia We're on in the journey Let's shape and share a brighter future We're all in the journey Let's shape and share a brighter future We're all in together for St. Lucia we're all in. Let us remember that with the new dignity comes a measure of new responsibility. This is a call to action to every solution. Lift one another so we can progress together. Let our future be truly blessed As we journey with godliness Except for no to change Or some poor way please We run in the journey Let's shape and share a brighter future we're all in the journey Let's shape and share a brighter future We're all in together for St. Lucia We're all in Let every St. Lucia see the great Shape and share a brighter 